So you want to undervolt your Ryzen 5 7600 either because you want more performance or because you want lower temperature, lower power consumption and maybe even lower noise in your system. Well, this is the right video for you. However, there are two different methods to doing this. One, straight in the BIOS of your motherboard, which will allow you to set your settings there and never lose it. But it is a bit more difficult and it is a bit more motherboard dependent. So you cannot do that in every single motherboard and also in some motherboards um, it will basically be different. So it's a bit trickier for you guys to follow, but you can still cross-reference with my other videos. And another method which you guys ask for a lot, which is done straight in Windows via an app called the Ryzen Master. Now the benefit of this is it will work even on the worst and most locked motherboard out there. For today's video, I will give you the exact values to use in your Ryzen 5 7600 and actually 7600X as well, which will also work on the 7500 and 7500F still because they all share the same architecture pretty much and they all have six cores. However, I will be doing them in Ryzen Master. Now, why is that? Because I have here a Chinese motherboard, a Jinyue B650i, which is a very cheap but very good motherboard. I actually have a full review about it on the channel. I recommend you guys check it out. This motherboard doesn't have very good in BIOS overclocking support. So for this exact reason, we are basically doing it in Ryzen Master. If you want to do it in your BIOS, what you have to do is take the settings I will give you here today, then go on my channel in my CPU undervolting playlist and check tutorial for the Ryzen 9 1700X. Follow that procedure, but with the settings of today's video, and you will be golden if you want to do it in BIOS. But here's how to do it with Ryzen Master. So let's go. Now to download the Ryzen Master, you want to go on the official AMD website or just search Ryzen Master on Google, but I will put the link down below just in case. And then you want to download it, install it, and I will see you guys inside. Now we have two different ways to undervolt this CPU, even independently of how you do it. So in the BIOS or in Ryzen Master. One is the static option. Now, if you do it static, you will get higher productivity performance, overall lower temperature. However, you will get slight decrease in single core performance, but in gaming, most of the time, you're not gonna see a difference. With the dynamic version, you're gonna get even higher single core performance than at stock, and overall, the CPU is gonna just run a bit better for gaming. So I would say static for like productivity, or if you're after the lowest possible temps, and dynamic if you really care about the game to be honest basically for the dynamic we're, we're going to be using the curve optimizer so i will first show you the dynamic option so you just go all cores and then we want to go in the advanced view for Ryzen master which is this one and now we want to go into curve optimizer and go precision boost overdrive and once you're here you basically want to go and click on auto offset this will put it in manual and then you want to select all cores and then you want to go minus 20. And now minus 20 is going to work for most of you. So what you want to do is basically just hit this thing. Pretty much, pretty simple, just hit apply. Then you can also restart your PC. But again, when you do things like these, you always want to test and validate what you're doing. So for some CPUs, this will be perfectly stable and you can actually go even lower to like minus 25. But for some CPUs, this might crash. If it crashes, you want to go in five at a time. So you want to try minus 15 and then minus 10. I will also briefly touch upon doing per core overclocking. So if you go in per core, you can select a different value for each core. Now you can do this, but it's very difficult to actually test if they're stable. So I do recommend you stick to all cores basically. And I, again, I recommend you start with minus 20. And if minus 20 is fine, honestly, just keep minus 20. It's going to be perfectly fine. Then if you're doing this in the BIOS, you can also select a maximum temperature threshold. Basically set it to 85 degrees. 85 is what you want. Okay. Now you can also do that in Rise Master. So how you would do that if you want to be just absolutely uh, certain of what you're doing basically is this so you select a profile because ryzen master well yeah you will have to play around with it a little bit but basically it works in profile so you can just select a profile in here you can select your maximum temperature so after you've put the negative offset i recommend you go and set it to 85 degrees on here as well and then just apply and it will just immediately work i think it's just better so basically minus 20 85 degrees now this again is personal preference. You can also do 80, you can also do 90 if you prefer. 
really depends on you. I think 85 is a good medium, just like minus 20. So minus 20, 85 maximum. Now let's transition over to the static control. Now let's take a look at the manual option. Now, manual is pretty simple. So voltage control, you basically want to set it manually to 1.2 volt right there. You then want to change your core clock to 4.8. So how you do that is you click over here and you click over here to have all your cores synchronized and then you drag it until you are at 4.8 right there. There we go. Now at this point you can just hit apply. Okay. And now again, here you have a bit of wiggle room so you can still customize it and make this the way you want. So basically how you do this is you can push the core a little bit harder but you have to test if they're stable voltage i really wouldn't go higher than 1.3 volt on this cpu because it's gonna defeat the purpose of undervolting because you're gonna just run super hot i think really the maximum to be 300 volt is 1.25 okay if you really want to push the frequency or you can also go a bit lower maybe 1.175 with a bit of a lower clock in case you want to run it a bit cooler the range for the core clock is really you can go all the way up to 5 gigahertz with a high enough core voltage and downwards i wouldn't really go lower than 4.6 to be honest you start losing performance at that point so i wouldn't recommend it and this is basically it for today's video now how to save this thing well you basically hit apply hit save and you will have your profile in profile one basically or if you're doing the core optimizer thing you will have it just inside of here as you can see and if it ever just uh, gets lost via windows etc you can just uh, apply it again again i personally prefer using the bios a little bit but you guys wanted this tutorial as well so i made it for you but i recommend you go check out the bios one as well maybe after you're really confident with this you can just transition your settings in the bios but ryzen master is also very useful just to find where your cpu is stable at i think that's very useful so guys if this video was helpful please drop a like and a sub and hopefully i will see you guys in the next one i have many more tutorials for cpus gpus and even builds on the channel so consider checking them out goodbye